Welcome to HB Tuner's GM Gen 5 training part 39. In this training module, we're going to be exploring how to work with the calibration process in speed density operations, so dialing in our virtual volumetric efficiency using our closed loop trims. This is going to be a really tedious process. We're going to go through everything from start to finish so you can see everything and how that is going to go. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how to dial in our virtual volumetric efficiency or the speed density operation in our GM Gen 5 applications. This tutorial is going to be focusing on how we can dial in our virtual volumetric efficiency table for idle, part throttle, and overrun conditions. Overrun is when we do our lift throttle and we're sourcing our air mass representation from our virtual volumetric efficiency speed density calculations. So what we'll find here, we've talked about the dynamic airflow, we've talked about mass airflow, even talked about speed density. The speed density is going to be the estimation of airflow coming into our engine at any given time. The dynamic airflow is going to be the blending between the mass airflow, air mass registration coming from the MAF sensor, the MAF calibration curve, and then it's going to be a blend between the speed density, which is estimating the amount of air mass. So our virtual volumetric efficiency table is going to allow us to estimate that air mass correctly. In transient conditions, the dynamic airflow, which is the primary airflow or air mass uh, means of calculation and source of air mass in our engine control module, the dynamic airflow is sourcing almost all of its air mass representation from our virtual volumetric efficiency speed density type of modeling. So it's going to be imperative for drivability purposes that our speed density is dialed in. Even if you're going to be running in a MAF only mode, we still want to make sure that we have things sorted out within the speed density operation. Now there are other reasons why we want to make sure that things are sorted out with our speed density. The virtual torque calculations rely heavily on the speed density rather than the mass airflow sensor. So it's imperative that we have everything sorted out for the speed density so that the torque calculations are correct. If the torque is inaccurately calculated because we have a skewed air mass reporting from our virtual volumetric efficiency speed density operation, things like our throttle control or the fuel control, fuel pressure control, low and high pump control can be an issue. Things that reference cylinder air mass can become a problem. So spark timing, again, the fuel pressure control, they're referencing cylinder air mass, which is a function of dynamic airflow. This is all going to lead to incorrect spark timing. Cylinder air mass is also something else used for spark timing. It can lead to uh, inaccurate spark timing. It could be leading to inaccurate fuel pressure control for the low or high side pumps. And then more importantly, because torque is based on airflow, spark timing, and the fueling that we're giving in our engine, if we're misrepresenting what the airflow is doing in a speed density type of calculation, that means that the torque calculations will be off and everything in the Gen 5s is going to be torque based from our air conditioning as it's turning on and off and modeling the pressure in the AC system all the way down to transmission shifting on automatic. So we want to make sure that we have our airflow being estimated as close to accurate as possible and we're able to do this in going in our virtual volumetric efficiency table and dialing it in. Now if you've done any tuning before with any previous GM generation especially the Gen 4, the virtual volumetric efficiency interface is going to be very familiar. In fact, it's almost identical to what we found in the Gen 4 lineup. If you're coming from a Gen 3 GM into a Gen 5, things are a little bit different and we'll break down here in this tutorial here um, what we need to do in order to calibrate things properly. But let's jump in here. Let's take a look at first what I've prepped my calibration file with. So I've actually went in and I turned off a few things and I have set up the speed density operation. So we are going to be operating in a MAF failed mode. We're failing out the mass airflow sensor so that we go in run just on speed density virtual volumetric efficiency calculations for estimating the air mass. We're not using or weighing anything on our mass airflow calibration scaling so that we have a pure speed density operation and we really can go in and figure out how far things are off in our airflow model. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to show you what I've prepped my file that I've already flashed and captured data log with. So we're going to be looking at this back to back. Once we've gone through looking at the prepping of the file and talking about some specific details you need to know in order to make sure you can calibrate your speed density virtual volumetric efficiency correct, we'll look at the log data from the subsequent calibration file here and then we'll review things that you need to know, things you need to pay attention to 
and then we'll go in, I'll flash the car, I'll drive it with the changes that we've made based on that data log here that we're gonna be taking a look at in the VCM scanner, and then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna log it again, and then we'll go through this process two or three times. We'll see how things line up. And you'll see that the virtual volumetric efficiency model should start to line up here. Now, if you have a cam, things are definitely gonna be thrown off quite a bit, specifically at idle and low RPM compared to a stock cam. And that's largely dependent upon the cam profile that you have, but if you take a look at, let's just say a large cam in general, at idle, we lose idle torque. We actually trade off idle torque, low end torque, for the torque to hold better at high RPM and have high RPM power. So we'll find as a function, our virtual volumetric efficiency, our airflow modeling, it's all based on a stock cam where we have decent amount of torque, decent amount of airflow coming into the engine. All of a sudden with the aftermarket cam installed, we're gonna find that we're in a situation where we don't have as much airflow and we're overestimating the airflow and you have to turn things down quite a bit. Normally, it's about a 20 to 30% reduction in the estimation of airflow through the virtual volumetric efficiency tables if you have a cam just kind of as a guideline. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.